Hey everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of gastroparesis. So we're going to begin by talking about what gastroparesis is, and then we're going to talk about why there are certain signs and symptoms that occur in gastroparesis. So what is gastroparesis? Gastroparesis is a gastrointestinal disorder involving delayed gastric emptying in the absence of mechanical obstruction. So what does all of that mean? So it is a gastrointestinal disorder involving delayed gastric emptying. So gastric emptying, so emptying of the contents from your stomach after you eat. And it's in the absence of a mechanical obstruction. So there's nothing that is actually there physically blocking the emptying of your stomach. It just doesn't empty properly. It's delayed. So if you take a look at this diagram here, here is your stomach going into your small intestine, going into your large intestine. Now what happens normally is that there is nervous system supply to your stomach that allows proper contraction of your stomach and release of stomach contents in a timely fashion. However, in gastroparesis, the nervous system supply can become damaged or injured. So your stomach is not able to process the food and release it properly. So it's not able to release stomach contents through the pyloric sphincter into your small intestine properly. So it sits in your stomach. So that is the main issue with gastroparesis. So it's essentially a paralysis of your stomach. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of gastroparesis? So now that we know that, we can understand why these symptoms occur. So the first one is nausea and vomiting. So you can imagine that if there is stomach content sitting in your stomach and it's not being properly moved along in your gastrointestinal system, if it's not able to go to your small intestine, it will sit in your stomach and can cause nausea and vomiting. And oftentimes this is chronic. So individuals with gastroparesis will have chronic nausea and vomiting. So nausea and vomiting for long, long periods of time. And again, this is due to food sitting in your stomach for extended periods. And individuals with gastroparesis may vomit up undigested food. So food sitting in your stomach is not being digested properly can actually lead to nausea and vomiting of undigested food. Another symptom of gastroparesis is early satiety. So what is early satiety? Early satiety is essentially feeling full quickly. So you feel that you can eat a lot, you have a good appetite, you eat, but then you feel full very quickly. And again, this can be due to food not being able to pass along through your stomach properly. So it'll sit in your stomach and you can feel full because of that. And then there's also this feeling of being full for a long time after eating. So you eat and then you feel full for long periods of time even afterwards. So this can happen as well. Now another symptom of gastroparesis is abdominal pain. And it occurs in the upper portion of your abdomen or your epigastric area. So we're going to show you a diagram of the stomach. And when localizing areas of the stomach, we actually break it down into quadrants. So we put a cross essentially through your belly button, your umbilicus. So here is the right upper quadrant. So if we look directly on the patient, this is the patient's right side. This is the patient's left side. So this is the right upper quadrant right lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, and left lower quadrant. And the pain that individuals often feel in gastroparesis occurs in the upper or epigastric area. So it's in this location. And if we actually take a look at this diagram we looked at before, this makes sense because your stomach can be in this area as well. So it will kind of be on the left side, but you can feel it in this area. So Again, this makes sense because if there's food just sitting there, not digesting properly, this can cause pain. Oftentimes it feels vague and it's a burning or cramping sensation and it oftentimes will worsen with eating. So individual will eat and this pain will get worse and then they will also have feelings of indigestion. Another symptom of gastroparesis is heartburn. So that burning sensation in your stomach. Again, this is due to food sitting in your stomach for extended periods of time. So there is a little sphincter here, the lower esophageal sphincter. This essentially closes the esophagus off from the stomach. But sometimes this can open. It can allow stomach contents to go into your esophagus. So your stomach is very acidic those stomach contents can go into your esophagus causing heartburn. And because your stomach 
is not digesting food properly and it's not emptying properly, this stomach contents can sit here and it can actually get into your esophagus causing heartburn. So again, food sitting, staying in your stomach for long periods of time. And then the heartburn again is from that gastric acid and the gastric contents entering the esophagus. Now we can also see bloating and belching with gastroparesis. Again, this is due to the same reason, food sitting and staying in your stomach for long periods of time. So individuals with gastroparesis will often feel that there's some bloating in the stomach area and they can also feel some gas and some belching from that as well. And they can also have reduced appetite and weight loss. So this is mostly due to the fact that there is chronic nausea and vomiting. So a lot of times because there's chronic nausea and vomiting, individuals don't even want to eat. And we talked about the worsening abdominal pain with eating. This is another reason why individuals with gastroparesis often refrain from eating. So these both lead to reduced appetite and weight loss. So weight loss can definitely be a sign of gastroparesis and reduced appetite can be a symptom of gastroparesis due to the chronic nausea and vomiting, worsening abdominal pain, and because of that early satiety. So if you want to learn more about gastroparesis in general, including some of the causes, ways it is diagnosed and ways it is treated, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.